So a lot of times people will message me or pull me inside at the track and they want to know why their progressive controller is not working properly or it doesn't come on, it doesn't ramp like it should, it doesn't feel like it hit like it should. Um, typically, it is one of these symptoms and this is the answer. So before we start, this is not intended towards anybody um, and I do realize that everybody has the best tuner in the industry and they know everything and everyone can answer their own questions and no one can learn anything. So just take this for what it is. Hopefully it helps somebody. So if you're in the shop and you're testing your nitro setup and you hit the wide open throttle switch or the TPS and it keeps pulsing after the ramp. So if you have a, if you have a 1.4 second ramp and it just pulses forever, like it just never stops pulsing. You should make sure that the progressive controller is grounded directly to the battery. If you're going down the track and it's surging and you, you check the wide open throttle, you check your TPS settings, you check all the other settings and you can't figure out why it keeps surging, you should ground it directly to the battery. That's due to this, because one of them will keep pulsing or one of them won't. If sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't, Sometimes this is a case of not enough power going to the solenoid. If you check that and it has the power that it should for the amp draw on the solenoid, then you should ground it directly to the battery. If your AFRs are not consistent, if you hit it with a 12.8 or 11.8 just like it should, and then 3.30 it goes to a 13, or at the end of the ramp it goes to a 12.8 or a 13 something, and you can't figure out why in the world is it doing this, everything looks fine you should make sure that it's grounded directly to the battery. So the reason is the nitrous solenoid or the fuel solenoid may keep pulsing after the ramp. If only the fuel solenoid comes on, typically this is a case, an extreme case of you don't have enough power going to them. The fuel solenoid might take 10 amps to open up, whereas the nitrous solenoid takes 20 amps or in some cases 30 amps to open up the solenoid. If there's not enough power, the fuel solenoid will open, the car will fall on its face. If you check that and you have enough power, you should make sure your progressive controller is grounded directly to the battery. If only, we did that one, if it works on a dry fire and not while it's running, that is the, it's got to be grounded to the battery. So if you're sitting here in the shop, you check it a thousand times, everything works. You go to the track and nothing works. You come back to the shop, you check it again, everything works. You go back to the track, nothing works. You should ground your progressive controller directly to the battery. Um, if the battery is in the back of the car and the progressive is in the front, you should run the wire all the way to the back of the car and ground it directly to the battery. Um, a Holly, a Dominator, a Grid, an MSD box, um, a Pro Max, a NOS Mini, any of that stuff, Max 5, they should all be grounded directly to the battery. Um, most progressive controller instructions even say this in the instructions. They'll say the main ground for the progressive controller should be a clean ground or a direct battery ground. So hopefully this will help. Uh, I fix it all the time for people. That's the only thing I typically change. They'll come in, they'll have it grinded to the chassis. I fix it, I'll put it on the battery and tell them they're good to go.